To apply a drop shadow in Photoshop, all you need to do is double click on the layer that you want to apply your shadow to. In this case, I'm going to apply a drop shadow to my logo PNG layer, and it's important to remember that your drop shadow will appear behind any visible pixels on that layer. So in this case, because I have a transparent PNG logo, the drop shadow will appear around the outside edges of that logo. The same thing would apply to shapes or text or image layers and things like that. This will access layer styles, and within the style setting, we'll go down to drop shadow and make sure to click on that settings so it's not only enabled but when we click on it we can see all of the drop shadow settings. Now there are a few settings that are pretty self-explanatory and you might be already familiar with such as opacity which is the intensity of the shadow. Then we have the blending mode which I would just recommend leaving set to multiply which is the default we can change the color of our shadow by clicking on this color swatch here. But as for the angle and the distance setting, these are things that are easier to adjust simply by clicking on your drop shadow and dragging it where you would like to go. So this will automatically update the distance and angle sliders as you see here. As for the look and sharpness of our shadow, we can adjust those with our spread and size sliders. But before we get there, the final thing to remember about the angle adjustment is the use global light setting. If you have this enabled and you have multiple layer styles applied onto a layer with a light angle setting, all of those other layer styles will follow the same global light setting so they all have the same light angle throughout your layer styles. If you want to have different angles for your drop shadows or glow effects or whatever, you want to make sure that use global light is disabled, but I'll show you how this applies in just a moment. Anyways, for the spread and size, the size is going to either make your shadow sharp if you have a low size or it's going to make it really soft if you have a high size. The spread is just going to increase the intensity of the color related to the size as you see here. So if you want a really soft shadow I would recommend leaving the spread down to a low percentage. The final options that we have are in the quality settings and we can leave the contour set to its default value but if you want to add any grain to your shadow you can do so by increasing the noise slider like so. Now all of these drop shadow settings will give you a basic drop shadow but if you want to take things one step further, you can add multiple drop shadows to your photos. After you've customized your first drop shadow to your liking, we can add another drop shadow simply by clicking on the plus icon beside our existing drop shadow setting. This will create a second drop shadow and clicking on that new drop shadow, we can go and refine these settings as we would like. For example, I can click and drag and move this shadow to a completely new area, or we could use this as a way to more softly blend our shadow into the photo. But as I mentioned before, we have the use global light setting, which means when I adjust this angle slider, both of our drop shadow layers are going to move in sync. However, if I disable use global light, now only the shadow that I am currently editing will be moved while the other drop shadow will stay in place. So this is a great option if you want to have different light angles for your shadows for creative effects. But in this case, I would like to use global light and I'm just going to bring down the opacity, increase the size and refine the spread. So this simply adds a softer blend to the shadow as you see here, which is a nice effect that enhances the original drop shadow. Now, after you've applied your drop shadow adjustments, what if you need to add those onto another layer? Well, rather than having to redo the entire process, you can simply copy and paste them with a simple shortcut. In this case, I've added a single text layer into my project. And on the logo layer, we have both of our drop shadow effects that we can toggle on and off here, or we can turn all of our layer styles on and off with the effects icon. But if we want to apply these same drop shadows onto the text layer, all you need to do is hold Alt or Option, click on the word effects, and while holding Alt or Option, click and drag up and let go on the layer you want to apply your drop shadow to. So this will take the exact same drop shadow and apply it on that new layer so you can save yourself some time in the process. If you ever want to remove your drop shadow effects, you can simply right click on the effects options and go down here to clear layer styles. So these drop shadow techniques work really well for graphics, shapes, and text, but if you want to add a drop shadow to a person for your compositing work, then that is going to require a different process. To learn how that all works, make sure to check out this video right here 
where I dive into the process of drop shadows for people in a separate lesson.